Welcome to Awareness to Action, a podcast brought to you by the Northwestern Community Services Board Prevention Department. I'm your host, Casey, a social worker and prevention specialist here in Virginia. Our podcast goal is to promote wellness through conversation, connection, and action. We hope each episode will leave you feeling inspired and motivated to look for ways to get involved in your own community. Hello, and welcome back to Awareness to Action. I am so excited to welcome Doris Walker-Taylor to the show. Doris is a senior ambassador at Thistle Farms, a nonprofit social enterprise dedicated to helping women survivors recover and heal from prostitution, trafficking, and addiction. Doris is a 2012 graduate of Thistle Farms and is here to share her story and tell us about the work and the healing being done at Thistle Farms. Doris also recently authored her first book, Hope is Always Real. Every word that Doris shared in this conversation is imbued with hope. It was a joy to hear about the freedom she has found in her healing and the encouragement she has for others who feel stuck or alone. Doris is also able to share about the amazing services offered at Thistle Farms in a unique way because she has benefited from them herself. As a heads up, this episode includes dialogue on substance use, sexual assault, trafficking, trauma, gun violence, incarceration, and prostitution. Doris shares her story so beautifully that if you feel it might be best for your own mental wellness to avoid this part of the episode, you can skip ahead to the 10-minute mark. Okay, Doris, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I'm so excited you're here. Um, For our listeners, Doris and I have been trying to record this for a long time, and um, our schedules have just been very different. Life has thrown us some curveballs, but we're finally sitting down, and we are truly both so excited. We are. I am very excited to be here. So we finally made it, and that's a good thing. We made it. So Doris, let's start with you telling our listeners about the work and mission of Thistle Farms. Absolutely. So, you know, when I talk about this Farms, which is an absolutely amazing organization, when I talk about this Farms, it just gives me chills because this program is such an amazing organization. So this Farms is a nonprofit organization and it was founded in Nashville, Tennessee, but we've actually spread throughout the nationally. So we have like a uh, 505 beds across the country. We have 95 sister organizations. But when I talk about Thistle Farms, you know, Thistle Farms is made up of a lot of different entities. We have the Cafe at Thistle Farms, which has absolutely amazing food. If you happen to be listening to me and you're in Nashville or going to be in Nashville, we're located at 5122 Charlotte Pike, and the cafe is located there. Inside the cafe, there's a front store where all the products are made. So I must say for anyone who does not know or have not heard of Thistle Farms, this program is designed for women just like me, survivors of human trafficking, prostitution, addiction, and abuse. Either of those are the entire gamut. So the cafe is run by survivors. We have women who make amazing dishes. We have the front store that sell our products that we make. We have the manufacturing manufacturing facility right there on campus where the survivors are making the products. But for me, the heart of the program, and I say that because I'm a survivor, the heart of the program is the residential piece. Because without that residential piece, we would not have gotten our lives back. So Thistle Farms has a two-year supportive housing program. It is totally free to the survivor. When you come into the houses, and when I say houses, they're actually homes. I've heard our founder, Becca Stevens, say countless numbers of times that the houses are built beautifully, and they're built the way most churches build their organs, intentionally lavish. So the houses are gorgeous. And it's a two-year program. When we come in, they send us to therapy. If we didn't finish school, we're able to go back to school. They send us to the dentist, anything that we need to become whole again. I remember when I was there, I went to SAC, which is a local sexual assault center. And that helped me so much. And the thing about Thistle Farms is that every woman's plan is her own. So what it took for me to get clean might not be what it took for the next woman to get clean and get her life back. So uh, so that's just the overview of Thistle Farms. But let me tell you, 
There are women who come into our program for all sorts of reasons. There are some women who come into our community because they grew up in homes where addiction was prevalent and they thought that was an okay way of life because they didn't know any better. There are some women who come into our community because they were sold into human trafficking at a very early age. That was not part of my story. Neither was the addiction in the house. There are some women who come into our community because they were touched by a family member or a stranger and their cycle of molestation started a cycle of trauma in their lives. That wasn't part of my story either. So when I landed at Filson Farms after 26 long, miserable years of addiction, I'm thinking, my life was so started off so different than all the other women, but yet I landed right there. And the thing was, I had an amazing childhood. I grew up in a little town north of Nashville, Tennessee, White House, Tennessee. So sometimes when I, prior to the pandemic, when I would travel to some of the schools, the local schools, and talk to the students, and I would try to get them to understand how I had an amazing childhood, and I wanted them to understand that the place I grew up was a perfect home-style place. So I would say I grew up in a little town north of Nashville, Feel, a little town like Mayberry. And all the students would be like, what's Mayberry? <laughs> you know, it went over their heads. And they were too young for that. But I had an amazing childhood. So I grew up in a faith-based home. My mother and my father were humble believers in God. And they taught me that prayer is the most powerful tool that we possess. My life started off amazing. I was the youngest in the family. My dad taught me that music is food for the soul. He would take me to church, push me in front of everybody, and I would sing. That was my life. Had a great childhood. Until one day out of the blue, a very troubled family member came into our family home, severely injured my mom, shot my father. I'm 12 years old. My entire life stopped that day. My dad died, my mom was severely injured, and I immediately began to live a truly, a life full of denial. So my whole life had changed. Everything changed. Before that incident, I was an A-plus student, but after that, I would be sitting in the classroom, and the teacher would be teaching, and my mind would go back to that same scene. So my grades began to fall, and then I started hanging out with the cool kids at school. So I found myself having a childhood addiction to marijuana at the age of 13. That addiction quickly progressed. And by the time I was an adult, I had a full-blown cocaine addiction that led me from this little nice town of White House all the way into Nashville, Tennessee. When I landed in Nashville, that's where I began to live a truly inhumane lifestyle. So my life changed. It was full of going to jail and getting out of jail. And it was a vicious cycle. Now, when I was on the street, I had a friend named Regina. And I thought Regina died because our lives didn't hold any value. She just disappeared. I'm walking down the street every day. And I couldn't pray because I'm too high and too inebriated. But I'm reciting the 23rd Psalm. And I would cry out. And I'd be like, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. At the end of the 23rd Psalm, I would cry out and I would say if you come and get me, I promise you I will dwell in your house forever. That was my story. That was my prayer. That's what I did every day in the midst of trading myself as though I was some type of commodity. I go to jail again. So I like to make the analogy of Thistle Farms in jail. When you go to jail, they take your clothes. They give you this ugly orange jumpsuit. They tell you when to eat. They tell you what to eat. And they talk to you in a manner that makes you feel worse about yourself than you already felt. When I came into Thistle Farms, they told me to dream and dream big. And Thistle Farms, our tagline is Love Heals because this organization loves us back to life. They love on us until we're able to love ourselves. So I'm sitting there in jail with my head down and I looked up and across the room, I thought, is that Regina? I thought, no, that can't be Regina because she's dead, I thought. So this woman turned around and she was glowing from the inside out and it was Regina. She was not there as an inmate. She was there to bring a word of hope. So she turned around and she got as close to me as they would allow her to get. And she said, Doris, guess what? I got my life back. I'm like, how did you do that? She said, I found this program. I'm like, Regina, I can't go to another program. I have gone to so many 30-day programs. Well, what is 30 days going to do for me when I've been, addicted the vast, I've been addicted the vast majority of my life? 
She said, Doris, this is a long-term program. And I said, no, I'm going to halfway houses. They're 90 days, which is much longer, but they charge $125 to $140 a week. She said, Doris, Thistle Farms, at that time, it was called the Magdalene House in 2009. She said, Doris, Magdalene is designed for women like us. It's a two-year program and it's totally free. So she gave me the number. Usually when I got out of jail, I would go right back to the street. But this time I went home. I, at this time in my life, I had been addicted for 26 long miserable years. And I had been on the streets of Nashville for 20 years. So I got home to my mom's house. I, I thought, I'm not going back to the street. I'm going home. And I held on to that number that Regina gave me for all my might. So I walked into my mom's house. My two children was there because my mom was raising them. And they loved and they hugged on me. And I went in the room where I grew up as a child. And I saw this big picture of my daughter on the wall. And I took that picture down and I scribbled that number on it that Regina gave me. And I put the number back up there. And I thought, now that number will be safe because everything I touch turns to dirt. Stayed at home for a few days. Didn't know how to live without drugs. And uh, Regina, I called her and I said, can I come in that program? She said, Doris, let me go talk to somebody. I'll call you back tomorrow. Tomorrow's not good enough for me. So I go back to the street. But before I left, my brother said, Doris, you know what? You are killing our mom. Every time the news come on, they find the woman dead or severely injured. They think it's you. Can you please just call our mom and let her know you're doing okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what had happened was the drugs had done what I needed it to do, which was numb the pain. But the drugs had done exactly what I did not want it to do. It had taken away Doris. I just did not care anymore. So I returned to the street. But this time when I got to the street, it was totally different. I would be sitting in a nasty, dirty crack house and something in my spirit would say, hey, Doris, call your mom. I'm like, no. I would be walking down the streets of Nashville about to open the car door to a stranger's car and trade myself as though I was some type of a commodity. And something deep within me would say, call your mom. So for the eight, next eight or nine months, I was totally miserable on the street. Miserable than I've ever been. Because this thing just kept gnawing at me. So one day I thought, let's do it, let's do it. I called my mom. I said, hey, mom, this is Doris. I just wanted you to know I was doing okay. And I was not doing okay. She said, Doris, I need you to do one thing for me before I leave this earth. She said, the songs you sang as a child, the songs I know you can sing, come home. We're having a choir anniversary. So I go back home. This time when I got home, I hadn't been home in nearly a year. And I had blisters underneath the bottom of my feet. And I was bruised from the inside out. And I had just about lost my will to live. And I walked to my mom's house and I just collapsed on the bed. And I slept that night more safe and more sound than I had slept in a couple of decades. So I stayed home. The people at the church were people who I hadn't seen since I was little. I had the choir anniversary. I sang and I praised. I came home that night. Every night I would call Regina and she would say, just hold on, I'm going to get you. So after the anniversary, I thought, well, Regina hadn't called me back. I'm having using dreams every night. So I'm just going to go back to the street. So after the choir anniversary, I come home the next morning. I'm packing my clothes. My mom was in the kitchen. So as a child, I can remember my mom used to walk around the house and talk to God like he was her best friend. So I heard her say, God, my baby's home. And I need you to keep her here this time. Because if she goes back, she's going to die. So I'm in the other room trying to get out of there. So I'm calling folks. And usually if I come home and stay for a while, I could call and then people will come and get me and I could go back to the street. So the first call I made, they had a flat tire. The next call I made, they didn't have enough gas. I'm getting, I'm like, what's going on? So I started panicking. I started making calls. Hey, this is Doris. When you get this message, give me a call. I'm ready to go. My mom is in the kitchen and she is bringing the, the heavens down to her. And she's like, God, I need you to come home and, and keep my daughter here. And she was quoting every verse in the Bible. And she's like, I'm standing on your promises. And my mom used to love to sing these gospel songs when she walked around the house. And I could hear her in the kitchen. She was like, 
Oh, Lord, I want you to help me. And she came in my room and I'm packing my clothes because I'm ready to go. So she said, Doris, what are you doing? I said, Mama, I'm fixing to go. I did what you asked me to do. She said, what are you doing? She wouldn't take no for an answer. So I turned around and my mom had tears running down her eyes. And if I had been in my right mind, that would have stopped me. But nothing could stop me when I wanted drugs. So she said, what are you doing? I said, mom, I'm going back. And I'm thinking, oh, somebody here up and called me. So the phone rang and I'm like, yes. I said, Hello, you ready to come get me? It was Regina. <laughs> and Regina said, yeah, Doris, I'm ready to come get you. So on a Monday morning, November the 9th, 2009, I went from my house in White House into the Thistle Farms residential program that was called Magdalene House at that time. And I got my life back. So when I got there, I saw all the women that I thought were dead. They were glowing and they were learning and they were laughing. So I got all these sisters around me and we become sisters for life. And then, so when Thistle Farms first started back in 1997, Regina was one of the first five women that came to the program. Becca Stevens founded this amazing organization. She brought the women in. The women were staying clean. They were getting their lives back. They were going to court and getting their records expunged, but they were dirt poor. So when they went out to get the job, nobody would hire us because of our background. So Becca Stevens started the Thistle Farm Social Enterprise in 2001. So when I got there in 2009, they sent me to the manufacturing facility and I started making lip balms. My first job was to pour lip balm. So I would mix up almond oil and lanolin and beeswax. And we did not have the machinery that we have now. So I would mix all the ingredients up in a pitcher and try to pour them into this little tube. And I thought, oh my God, I'm going to die. But I stuck with it. So now I am serving as the senior ambassador at Thistle Farms. So my job now is to tell people about this amazing organization. Becca Stevens decided that she, not only did she want to help people in Nashville, not only does she want to help the women around the United States who have sister organizations, we want to help every woman on this earth. So now we have a global initiative. So we have products from San Juan Casillas, Mexico. It's a super superfood tea. It's a superfood bush and it produces Moringa tea. So it has like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, potassium, stabilizing blood sugar, increases the memory, all this good stuff. But what sold me on the tea is that it has an ingredient in it that slows down the development of wrinkles. And I'm like, oh my God, start drinking, Doris. <laughs> Pour it all over yourself. <laughs> Get it now. <laughs> but you know, we make candles at Thistle Farms. And candles are amazing because if you purchase a Thistle Farms candle, there's a little card inside of it that says, we light the candle for the woman still out there sick and suffering. We light a candle so that it can cut a path through the darkest night. So candles are very important in our community. We have a global initiative that has all types of global products, beautiful baskets from Uganda, Rwanda, Africa. We have this all natural insect repellent. It's a bug spray. The, the active ingredient is geranium and that geranium is grown in the fields of Rwanda, Africa where their ancestors actually died from the genocide. So they grow these amazing geranium plants and they send them to us. We add spearmint peppermint, lemongrass, and citronella to it. Shake it up, spray it on yourself and on your children. It repels fleas, mosquitoes, and ticks. I could go on and on and on about the wonderful products that Thistle Farms has. I got to say, we have an amazing online initiative at Thistle Farms. So at Thistle Farms, you can go online and you can order these amazing products, but just keep in mind, every time you purchase a product or make a donation, you happen another lady just like me get her lives back. Thistle Farms is full of stories. Not Most women don't ever tell their story because they, they don't have to. You know, I get, I actually love to tell my story because it makes me remember how far down I went and how this amazing organization helped me when I needed help. But Thistle Farms is a program that's designed for women like me. We get our lives back. We're able to flourish and do stuff. We get married. We do all the stuff that everybody else does and we get our lives back. And it is an amazing organization. It is. And who could be better to be an ambassador than someone like yourself who has benefited so much from 
the services and the community and then taken that and done so much with it. I think it's so beautiful that you share your story in this way and continue to work with an organization that has given you so much and therefore allows you to give to others. I mean, what a beautiful cycle. Yeah, it is a cycle. Because even when you get a product, not only are you buying a product that helps us, the product is made out of all natural ingredients and it has essential oils. And if you keep it for yourself, it is as kind to the earth as it is to the body. Or if you give it to a friend, like I've seen so many people buy lavender for their friends that are carrying a baby or for people who have maybe cancer and that lavender calms your spirit and your soul. So there are so many different healing properties in our products and it's like we get our lives back and then when we see women sometimes they don't even recognize them they'll be like is that you Doris and I'm like yep it's me let me show you where we got this glow from so then they can come in and they can get the healing their need so I'm just so grateful that Thilsa Farms I call because I'm a believer I call Thistle Farms the vessel that God sent to come get me. So it is an amazing organization. It's not a religious organization. Let me let me just make that disclaimer. Thistle Farms is not a religious organization. And I get it. I understand it. Even though the founder is an Episcopal priest, we do not want it to be a religious organization because we want the doors to be open to anyone who wants to come in and get the healing and the love that they need. There's no strings attached. And one of the things that meant so much to me when I came in the program, you know, not only were they clothing me and feeding me and sending me to therapy and doing and got my teeth fixed for me, they did everything I needed, but they also gave me a stipend. And I think it was like $65 or maybe $45 that they gave every woman. And it was just to use as you choose to. So I would go get my nails done because I was always fiddling with paraphernalia. So I wanted my hands to be beautiful. But when they gave me money, I mean, actual money, and said, this is for you to use for makeup or anything you want to do, it meant so much to me because never in my life, in the past almost three decades, Every time someone gave me money, I had to give a piece of myself in exchange. So when they gave me that money, it increased my self-worth. I'm like, it's a gift? You, you really think I'm worth a gift? And they would just hand me money. And that exchange of money meant more to me than you can imagine. Because it just let me know that I do have self-worth. I am worthy. These people really do love me. And all they ever ask of me is just to do the next right thing. So it's amazing. Yeah. Something I feel like we, a a phrase that we use sometimes is the dignity of work, like the power of giving someone work or giving someone the opportunity for work. There is so much empowerment in that because there's the, the piece of it where you're, you're accomplishing something in your work or you're creating something, you know, so many of the Thistle Farms products are crafted, like truly handcrafted. And you're also empowering someone to start building a life for themselves and and preparing for when, say, this program ends in two years, you know, Mm -hmm. that's huge. It is. It's amazing. It's like, you know, there's an old tale that says, uh, you can teach them. Uh, it's not that we need to teach the women to fish. We need the poles. We need the things to be able to do it with. So you give us skills. You teach us how to do things. We work. We get our records expunged. We're able to start voting. And then we can go out on our own and do whatever it is that we need to do because you have helped us and then you have instilled in us to dream and dream big. So that is an amazing thing. It's, it's an amazing thing. It is. Yeah. So we become self-supporting. And then we're able to take care of ourselves and we never have to sell ourselves ever again because now we know how to take care of ourselves. We know our self-worth. They sent us to therapy to deal with all of our issues. So it's just like any and everything that we need to become whole again, they do it for us. And it's all such an amazing gift. Yeah. So you have touched on this in talking about what the program means to you the organization, but Mm -hmm. Thistle Farms has been operating for over 20 years, which is- This is our 25th anniversary. Yeah. Okay, 25, a quarter of a century. Yes, yes, yes. Which is a huge accomplishment really for any organization, but especially for one that does this kind of life-changing work. And I'm 
I can think of a list. I can think of an answer to this question in my head, but I want to hear your perspective. What do you think allows it to continue to thrive? What are the factors that keep community partners engaged in the mission and keep, are keeping this going? I think it's because we have a, a 85% success rate. And that's that the women come in the program for two whole years, they're clean. They go out, they get their own place. And for an additional two years, they remain clean. So it's like a four or five year span that we track the women. They become, once you come in the program, you're always sisters for life. And we always have parties and we always do trips and do things to keep the women together. But I think the thing that does well is because we they, they make sure that we know, like we started, when you're in the program, you start an IDA account. And the money that you save, what you save fifteen hundred dollars, still supplies match it at the end of your two years. So now you've got three thousand dollars. You can get your own place to live and Thistle Farms, you know, because the prices in Nashville anyway, the prices of renting is just astronomical now because people are moving in. So now Thistle Farms make sure that the women never have to return to their way of life. They have bought, uh, they have purchased this, be purchased this beautiful uh, duplex, com this duplex uh, complex across from Hatley Park and the women can live there now and pay rent that's based on their salary. So they always have a place to live. So, you know, the, this barn just kept, keeps coming up with creative ways to make sure that this is a lifelong journey, not just a two-year program. It's a lifelong journey. Women use, we relapse, but we get back up again. And this Farms doesn't throw us away because we relapse. They'll send us to therapy. We go back to treatment and we come back and we try it again. So this program keeps loving on us until we get it right. You know, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. My mom died like three months after I got in the program, but the sisters held on to me so tight and they loved on me that I made it. That was the most valuable lesson that I could have learned because if my mom died, the first time my dad, my first parent, my dad died, I fell apart. The second time when my other parent died, this community of Thistle Farms held on to me and I made it through it. So now I know no matter what happens in life, if I use, I lose everything. And if I lose, if, if, if a loved one dies and I use drugs behind it, I've lost everything and the loved one is still gone. So now I realize that no matter what happens in life, using drugs is not an option for me. It's just not an option. It, it's just, it doesn't accomplish anything, but it messes up a whole lot. So I get it now. I get it. It took a long time, but I get it. Yeah. So. Well, and that healing takes a long time, which is mm -hmm. why I think it's so special that the Soul Farms is a long-term program and works, like you said, to give you the tools and the skills to be successful. And it sounds like connects you with a lot of community partners. Like it does. it's, it does. it's we're, we can't be successful when we, and maybe this is too broad of a statement, but when we have these short-term programs that are insular, it's, it's not nearly as helpful as programs that are, that have this continuity and, and kind of journey with the person who's yes, trying to change. When I would go to the 30 day programs, for me, a 30-day program was the exact same as going to jail for 30 days. I rested up, I had using dreams, and I ripped back out, and I was worse than I was in the beginning. When I went to those programs that were a little bit longer than 90 days, that was a better period for me to start clearing my mind up. But they charged me $125 to $140 a week. So I'm clean from drugs, but and nobody would give me a job. So I'm going right back out trade myself as though I'm some type of a commodity to pay my rent. And I feel so bad about myself. I go right back out and I use all over again. So it was a vicious cycle. And Thistle Farms broke that cycle for me because they loved on me. They put me in a beautiful house. They carried me shopping. They carried me to the mall. They carried me to a uh, therapy. They carried me to NA meetings. They did any and everything I needed to become whole again. They did it for two whole years. I've heard that if you do the same thing for 21 days, it becomes a habit. 
No, it didn't for me. But when I did the same thing continuously, and I still do the same thing now that I did when I came in the farm. When I came in, they teach us that every morning to get a routine in your life. Every morning when I woke up, I would hit my knees. When I get up, I would do a meditation. For some women, the meditation was to dance. For some women, the meditation was to read a book. For me, it was to read a book, uh, Jesus Calling, Sarah Young. So I still do that. 12 years later, I get up. I don't hit my knees because I'm old now, but I get up <laughs> and I say, thanks to my Lord. And then I read a meditation from Jesus calling. So I still keep doing the same thing, the same thing that it took me to get clean. It's the same thing it's going to take keep, take for me to remain clean. So it's a ritual. I've learned how to stay clean. And the prayers that my mom said back then, I am so grateful that prayers do not have an expiration date because they still work it. <laughs> They still work. Yeah, they still work. Something you mentioned earlier that I'd love to hear you speak more about is the love heals statement. Yes. Yes. That yes. is shared all over. Anything that Thistle Farms shares, love yes. heals is there. And I it would is. just love to know what that has meant to you. Okay. So, you know, like I, the Thistle Farms, the tagline is love heals. The tagline is also love is the most powerful force for change in the world. Locking me up didn't change me. Raping me didn't change me. Abusing me did not change me. But when I found a community of folks that were willing to love me right where I was, that made a difference. So for me, love heals a love means that you're willing to talk to me in a manner where you realize that you've got to use trauma-informed care. They make sure they do that. You have got to give me a job. You don't have to, but they give us a job that they know that we can learn. And then they give us a lifelong sisterhood. So for me, that love heals me that it's the community. You don't always get your way in a community. I'm like, don't get my way. At first, that was a problem. But <laughs> I realized in a community, it's like each one teach one. We don't keep secrets to keep each other sick. Because, you know, sick when you stay sick, when you keep secrets, you stay sick. But for me, love heals me that I never have to be alone again. I never have to use again. And I'm always, no matter if I start working at Thistle Farms, whatever happens in my life, I'm always going to be a Thistle Farmer. And there's always going to be a community of folks that have gone through the same things I have gone through and they have came out. So Thistle Farms meets in a big circle every Wednesday morning. And I love the analogy of the circle. The circle means that there's always someone in front of you there's always someone behind you. So if you start to fall, there's someone to catch you. If you don't know what to do, there's someone to lead you through that's already been through what I'm going through. So love is the most powerful force for change. On the back of every product, it says, heal, employ, empower. And then it will say, this product, whether it's a lotion or soap a candle, is made by the Women of Thistle Farms, a nonprofit social enterprise dedicated to empowering survivors. So that's what Thistle Farms is all about. A woman coming in really tired, really broken and scared and not knowing how to live. And within that two-year program, she blooms into something beautiful. I've heard people say, so where's the farm? And I'm like, okay, I don't work on a farm. Let's get that straight. I don't work on a farm, but we call it thistle farms because thistles are survival weed. A thistle has briars around it. If you get too close, it's prickly. So we come in and we're really tired and we're really prickly and we're pretty obnoxious. But then by the time we're there for two years, we begin to bloom into something really beautiful. So that glorious purple center of the thistle, it actually is healing in that thistle. We used to make thistle paper and we would tear up uh, like um, t-shirts and paper and put it in this big machine called a critter. And we would put thistle down of the thistle in there and work it up. And it was healing because milk thistle is very healing. Thistles are survival weeds. 
They grow through concrete, they survive drought, and we are survivors. So that's where we get the name the survivors. Yes. It's a good place to be. Yeah. It's a great organization to either be in as a survivor. It's a great organization to work at, even if you might have your master's degree or a specialty and you just want to come there to help the women learn. It is a great place. It's a great organization to to donate to or to purchase from because it's just good all the way around. And you know, like when volunteers come in and volunteer. At the end of the day, we'll be like, thank you. And they'll be like, oh, no, thank you. And we're like, no, thank you. So the lines get crossed on who's helping who because they get so much out of being there. You know, people, I've heard people to walk in, they'll be like, oh, my goodness, what's that smell? And I thought, I'm clueless because I smell it every day. I'm not sure. I'm thinking it's lavender, but it could be eucalyptus mint. But the place is just filled with these wonderful scents. It is hard for me because I'm, I'm an eater. It is hard for me to sit at my desk and smell that wonderful food coming out of a cafe. It is hard for me to sit at my desk on some days and under my feet is the candle world and you can smell all those rich essential oils coming up. So yeah, it's a great place to be. It is. And that back and forth of the volunteers benefiting and the women benefiting, that's, that is what community is. That is yes, what it means that's it. That's to be in a community show. and to be taking care of one another that's the perfect way to summarize it. That's it. That's absolutely it. So I'm glad that you're mentioning volunteers and, and folks who are contributing to the mission by purchasing products, because as you've said multiple times, Thistle Farms is based in Nashville. So how can people who are not in the Nashville area contribute so, to okay. the mission? Yes. So if you're not in the Nashville area, just go online to Thistle farms.org, T-H-I-S-T-L-E, F-A-R-M-S.org, thistlefarms.org. You can donate online. You can shop online. You can actually sign up for a virtual event. You'll see my picture on there. And I actually do virtual events. So the same way we're doing this podcast, uh, I'll set up a virtual event with you. You can bring women or men or whoever into your home. And I'll tell my personal story. I'll talk about the farms. I'll give you all a discount code to shop with. So you can still be a part of the Thistle Farms community. Um, you can donate or, or volunteer or one of our sister organizations because if you go on our website and look in the national network, you will see all the sister organizations around the United States that are located in different states. I'm sure there is a Thistle Farm sister organization in your community. So there's no way that you can miss Thistle Farms because love truly does heal. It does. And what would you say to someone listening to this conversation who feels like they might benefit from the services offered mm -hmm. by Thistle Farms. Yes. yes. It was a well-kept, you know, I remember my last days using, I would get my drugs and I would walk down the street by this big, beautiful house. And the drug dealers would say, be quiet, don't go by, be quiet when you go by there. And I thought it was like, maybe it's a church or a synagogue, but it was this it was a residential house. So it was a well-kept secret. It never has to be a well-kept secret anymore because I tell everybody I know. If you are tired, if you think you might be ready, give it a try. You've tried. If you're like me, we've tried everything else. I tried using on the weekends and going to church, uh, doing the right thing during the week and going to church on the weekends. It never worked. So there's no straddling the fence. But you will not, you will be amazed. I have done more living in these past 12 years than I did in the first, I can't count, I'm 66, in the first 54, 55 years all put together. So you would be amazed at the joy in your life. It's free. It's all a gift. So if you're sitting there and you're debating on whether or not you can get your life back, there is no one more addicted and more lost that I was and I did it. I would be happy to walk you through the process. You could call me anytime. Look me up on Thistle Farms website and call me and I will become your sister for life. It is an amazing chance and opportunity. So please don't, if you're listening to this by any chance, then it was meant for you to hear that there is a way out. Please take it. Take that leap. 
please. Yes, take it. Doris, I am sitting here listening to you and I feel like I could listen to you talk about your story and your hope all day. (laughs) (laughs) And um, lucky for me, I to our listeners, I learned just uh, before we started recording that Doris just published a book titled Hope is Always Real. Doris, please tell us about the book. Yes, 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 I did. You know, well, at Thistle Farms, they tell us to dream and dream big. So I wrote a book and it was published by a nonprofit organization called changeherstory.org. The book is entitled Hope is always real. I got hope in my life. I've got joy in my life. The book tells my story. It's interweaved throughout the book. And because I'm a believer, I wanted to base that with what I was saying. So I went in and as I was talking about hope, false hope, in the beginning, my false hope was when I tried to cover up all the stuff that was happening in my life with drug use. And then a little further on in my book, it will talk about finding hope in the midst of darkness, harnessing the power of hope to endure hardship, share hope with others in times of suffering, discover purpose in difficult seasons. So my book, and my name is Doris Walker Taylor. The name of the book is Hope is Real. And this book is an amazing book. It will actually lift you up, not tear you down, and will give you hope. It will give you confirmation because on the street, I continue to pray. So the prayers on the street that I made, which were sometimes foxhole prayers, they're in my book. The songs that I sang, they're in my book. The word of God that proves that he would never leave us nor forsake us are in my book. So please order a book. It will help me. It will help you. Please order my book. I appreciate it. Thank you. I will be ordering my own copy. I'm very excited to read it. (laughs) (laughs) Thank Um, you. Doris, I want to close with the question we ask all of our guests, which Mm -hmm. is what does the process of awareness to action mean to you? The process of awareness to action. Awareness is one thing, but if you just take that first step, I remember coming into the program, I thought they were going to like say, so what have you been doing? But they didn't, they didn't judge me. They said what they asked, what happened to you? So in the very beginning, I realized that if something devastating happens to us or we go through bad relationships, if we don't get help, that thing will manifest itself into a lot of different things. So become aware of what's going on around you and step into action. I am so grateful I got to meet you, Casey, because awareness into action. Be aware of what's going on in your life and step into action. Well, thank you for being here, Doris. I'm grateful for the opportunity to learn more about Thistle Farms for our listeners to hear more about the organization. I think they, they're incredible. As you've said, I mean, they, I really feel like they combine all the things I feel should be part of any organization trying to help individuals. There's empowerment and it's long-term and it's, it's all just rooted in this love and this hope. And, and so I'm grateful for you sharing that with us. And I'm, I'm also just really grateful for your presence here on this podcast, because I just, there's hope uh, woven into everything you've shared with us. And I'm really grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. You know, it's hard. You can't get out of beds in the morning if you don't have hope. So when I finally got my first call through to to, uh, Regina and she said, I'm going to talk to the director and we're going to get you in. That was the first hope, real hope, not false hope. That's the first hope I'd had in my life in a couple of decades. So yeah, so there. So love heals. Love is the most powerful force for change. Love heals. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for being here, Doris. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're more than welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. And thank you again to Doris for joining us. You can find information about Thistle Farms and Doris's book in the episode description. 
Make sure you subscribe to Awareness to Action to hear the rest of the conversations we have lined up for Season 2.